You're listening to the Journey to Launch podcast. Everything you need to know about credit unions and why banking with a credit union is good for your wallet and community. T minus 10 seconds. Welcome to the Journey to Launch podcast with your host, Jamila Souffrant. As a money expert who walks her talk, she helps brave journeyers like you get out of debt, save, invest, and build real wealth. Join her on the journey to launch to financial freedom in, in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, 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 journeyers. Welcome to the Journey to Launch podcast. I'm so excited to speak to you today to bring you this bonus episode about credit unions. Now, I partnered with Digital Federal Credit Union, also known as DCU, and it's been a great, great partnership because the synergy of what credit unions are all about and what DCU all about matches my vibe, matches Journey to Launch, because not only are they about helping their community, they're also helping your wallet as a credit union member. And so I wanted to bring more light about credit unions to you, some more education around what credit unions are, why you should join one and bust any myths that you may have. I mean, I even joined my own local credit union since starting this partnership, MCU. And so it was really important for me to bring you more information about credit unions. And so on the podcast today, I am talking to Ron McLean. Ron is president and CEO of the Cooperative Credit Union Association, also known as CCUA. The Cooperative Credit Union Association represents nearly 200 credit unions in Delaware, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island, empowering them individually and collectively to provide consumers with outstanding financial services. CCUA provides advocacy before legislators and regulators, resources for staying compliant, and educational opportunities to help credit unions effectively lead and manage thriving credit unions. So Ron basically knows all about credit unions. So I had to invite him on the show to really give us all the information about why we really need to consider credit unions as a valuable, viable option for our banking needs. And even better, guess what? Ron and I are going live on Instagram together next Friday. So depending on when you listen to this, Ron and I are going live on November 20th at 12 p.m. Eastern time on Instagram. We'll be going live from my page, Journey to Launch and Digital Federal Credit Union's page, DCU's page, and their page is DCU Credit Union. So make sure you're following me and DCU, and then you can check out our live on November 20th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I'll be sitting down with Ron. And so you can ask us questions in real time about your credit union options, how you join one, maybe something we did not address in this episode. First, a word from our sponsor, DCU, also known as Digital Federal Credit Union. Now, at their core, credit unions were founded on the philosophy of people helping people. For individuals that might find themselves part of the underbanked or underserved communities, credit unions offer individuals a safe place to manage their finances or help fund purchases as an alternative to other financial service providers like payday lenders. At DCU, the credit union places an enhanced focus on financial education by offering learning modules on key financial topics like budgeting, saving for the unexpected, building credit, and much more. DCU also offers a secured credit card that could help individuals establish or improve their credit by borrowing securely against their savings balance. To learn more, check out dcu.org. And stick around to the end of the show for a new segment called the DCU Money Tips of the Week, where I'll be sharing tips to help you save and manage your money so you can reach your goals. If you want the episode show notes for this episode, go to journeytolaunch.com or you can click the description of wherever you're listening to this episode to get the full episode show notes. Now, if you are a new listener to the podcast or an OG journeyer, I've created a jumpstart guide to help you on your journey to financial freedom. It includes the top episodes to listen to, the stages to go through to reach financial freedom, resources to help you, and so much more. Get it for free by texting LAUNCH to 33777. Text LAUNCH to 33777 or go to journeytolaunch.com slash jumpstart to get your guide for free right now. Okay, let's hop into the episode. Hey, journeyers, I'm excited because I have an honorary journeyer 
on the podcast, Ron McLean, who is from CCUA, Corporative Credit Union Associated. Hi, Ron. Hi, Jamila. How are you? I'm pleased to uh, join you. So thank you for the invitation. I'm really excited to have you on the show because since the partnership with DCU that we've created, I wanted to make sure that my audience is well-versed and knowledge, just as I'm still learning myself about credit unions. And so who better to talk to about the benefits of credit unions, the things that we are still learning and that we need to know is you. So um, I want to bring you here to give us some more background and give us all the things that we should know while we're making decisions on which credit union to join, how we can join, and all the amazing things. Well, Jamila, it's a great story to tell. I'm happy to share it. And uh, I think I have a lot of information, great information that your audience can benefit from and listen from. So uh, I'm here to help you and help your, uh, your audience. So uh, fire away. Right. So, okay. CCUA, what exactly is it, right? It's it's something that benefits credit unions, but like, what do you do in the midst of this? Yeah. So CCUA, and uh, what you'll find is in the credit union system, there's a ton of acronyms and CCUA stands for the Cooperative Credit Union Association. We are the trade association representing credit unions in four states. Those would be New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Delaware. And our company, we are the champion. We are the voice for credit unions in those four states. So we do a ton of things uh, when it comes to advocating with members of Congress, regulators, but we also do a ton of compliance, education, PR. But at the end of the day, we're trying to create an environment where more and more consumers can gain access and benefit from being a member of a credit union. Right. Now, what do you think has been like a barrier for people joining credit unions? Because you guys have been along, around for a long time now, right? Sure. I think it's uh, in some cases, it's just uh, general awareness. And in some cases, it's a history of just not knowing if, if somebody can belong to a credit union. And we'll, I think, talk about more of that in a little while. But I like to say that not everybody can join every credit union, but there is a credit union for everybody. Yeah. And even me, like, you know, I've been in the personal finance space talking about money and I've since the partnership with DCU done my own research, joined my own local credit union and hearing all the benefits. I'm just like, this is a no brainer. You think like everyone <laughs> would try, but there are some barriers. So I would like to talk a bit through that. But first, let's back up a bit and talk about what a credit union is for people who have no clue what it is. Sure, sure. So at its very core, uh, a simple uh, term I would use is a member-owned financial cooperative. What you're going to hear me talk about a lot today, Jamila, is the term member. Uh, when you are a member of a credit union, uh, you are not a customer. So that's a big difference. Uh, essentially, credit unions are owned and controlled, operated by the members of that credit union. So it's going to be a lot of the similar type of services, uh, products that a consumer might think of when a bank, uh, but very mission oriented. Uh, a big difference is they're not for profit stature and also being run by a volunteer board of directors that makes them very, very unique. And ultimately uh, for any credit union, it's essentially that if you are uh, have a profit for that credit union, that money goes back to their members in the form of lower fees, uh, better rates on loans, better rates on shares, new and enhanced services. Something that's very unique for credit unions is the term one member, one vote. So if you are a member of a credit union and you are voting, say, for the uh, board of directors, whether you have $50 or $500,000 on deposit, your vote counts the same. So very much, very much a democratic uh, way of doing banking, and a, a real incredible proud history of lifting people up, serving underserved communities, uh, fighting for economic justice. So a rich and proud history, which I'll talk more about hopefully uh, in our conversation. Yeah, and that's the you know amazing thing I think, especially in today's climate, with so many more people are conscious of how they're spending their money and who they spend their money with. This is a great solution, alternative, or just like a complimentary service that even if you still bank with traditional banks, that you are considering a credit union, like not just for your community, which is great, but just it's like also just good financial tools and products. Yeah, I would say it's in your best interest to take a hard look. And if not, definitely join a credit union. You will save money. You're going to put some more dollars back in your pocket and it's real dollars. 
Uh, the average family will save several hundred dollars a year at a minimum by being a member of a credit union, and that membership can extend to your family. Uh, so it's, again, in just strictly dollars and cents. Uh, there's a great other story when it comes to local trusted you know, financial institution, but um, at its heart, you know, uh, it's mission oriented. It's, it's about people helping people, people over profit. Uh, and part of that uh, translates into saving people money. Right. So it's the best, like you said, of both worlds. Yes, it has that good mission, but it also is a bit, you're making good judgment calls as a personal steward of your own money, putting your money in a credit union because you're making money. It's not like a charity where you're losing money. You are banking with the best here. Yeah, Jamila, I want to stress with your with your audience too that when a member walks into any credit union, that credit union, they want what's best for you and your family. So they won't try and feed you to death. They won't try and sell you something or cross sell something that's not in your best interest. They want what's best for you, your family, uh, et cetera. So you're a member owner of that credit union. So they want to help you and they will have your best interest in mind. And no matter what solution they have for you and to help you get to a better place in life. Right now. And, you know, the amazing thing is there are so many credit unions. So your organization supports how many credit unions? Right. So CCOA, we, we represent about 210 credit unions in the Northeast. There's roughly 5,000 across the country. It is a growing membership. So nationally, 120 million or so people are members of a credit union. Uh, assets are growing. Members are growing. It's definitely on the upward climb. Uh, but for our membership in our four states, we have 210. Wow, that's a lot. And so now let's talk about when people are considering uh, joining one. What are some of the things that like they need to look for? Because one of the things that I've heard come up for people is, well, I don't know if I can actually join. Like I've seen the credit union. There's one around the corner. Like for me, there was one around the corner. But you don't necessarily, you know, think about it. And you're like, well, maybe that's for us, like, you know, someone else. Like, I don't know if I'm eligible. So let's talk through how one can find if they're eligible and then join a credit union. Sure. So, uh, so there are two uh, sites I would like to direct your audience to. One is called bettervaluesbetterbanking.com. Again, bettervaluesbetterbanking.com. Also, another site called yourmoneyfurther.com. Again, being repetitive here, Jamila, yourmoneyfurther.com. Uh, you can go to both those sites. You can uh, just put in your zip code. That will give you a list of credit unions in your area. And it would take, you know, reaching out to a couple of credit unions to, to talk about, you know, uh, joining and, and membership. You can visit websites that will give you information about how you can join. And it, it's going to run the gamut. Uh, some credit unions will have a, a, we call a community charter, where it might be if you live, work, worship, or go to school in a certain area, that qualifies for membership. You know, I, I like to say that credit unions represent society. Uh, there are credit unions for the military, for postal workers, for hospitals, for teachers, for police, for fire. It's going to really, I guess, uh, be different per credit union. Not everyone has a community charter. Some are going to be specific to a, again, perhaps an employer or an association. Um, but there are two great tools and better values, better banking and your money further to explore membership. Yeah. And I will link all those website links in the show notes so that people can also um, follow up. And the other thing, so when I joined my local credit union, which is Municipal Credit Union, I was able to join because my husband is a teacher. So teachers were allowed to join it and then any family member. So as his wife, I was able to join. So sometimes it's just relationship wise that you can also be, be eligible. Yeah. And many times it's, uh, you know, once a member, always a member. So uh, a member for life, if you will. And that having that extend to the to the family uh, is just brings greater value to the credit membership. So. You know, on a household, again, a member members will save hundreds of dollars and, you know, family of five and do that times five. That, that's, that's real savings. Right. Now, how, so if one, so someone's interested in joining a credit union, um, it's no also, it's also not that different from joining a, a traditional bank in terms of their, for at least what I went through, it was simple. It was easy. I did it online in 10 minutes to open up my account. And so I think sometimes a barrier for people could be, well, like how much more work is this? Because it seems like a smaller operation, but just like you explained, actually credit unions are a big operation. It's just that a lot of people don't necessarily like know about it, but they're just as in tune with technology and being able to do things online, just like another financial institution. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. That's a, a myth. I think that uh, is certainly incorrect and not accurate. 
Uh, credit unions have killer apps. Uh, they have killer websites, uh, any device, any time of day, at your convenience. Uh, so, you know, think of credit unions, you know, on par, if not better than many of the banks out there. So, again, they, they invest in technology. Uh, they have great cybersecurity aspects. But, again, uh, you know, great apps, um, you know, remote banking, online banking. Don't ever think for a minute that a credit union does not have great technology because they do. Right. And then the other thing is that your money is safe at a credit union. So that might be something that people are thinking, well, I don't know, you know, but your money's just as safe or safer. Absolutely. Um, I would say uh, it is uh, equally safe between a, a credit union and a bank. Uh, if you're a, a customer of a bank and you walk into that branch and go to a teller, you might see a sign or you would see a sign for your deposits are insured for up to 250000 by FDIC. So if you walk into a credit union, and you go up to the teller, uh, you will see that your deposits are insured up to the exact same amount by NCUA, which is one more acronym. That stands for the National Credit Union Administration. Both FDIC and, and NCUA are government institutions. Uh, so your money, your money is super safe, and it's equally as safe between banks and credit unions. Right. And that's important to note, because I think there's a lot of mistrust of just systems and financial systems and institutions. And so further ensuring people like, look, your money is just as safe here. Anywhere else is important. Yeah, Jamil, I would say, you know, you, you use the word trust. And I want to make sure your, your audience knows that uh, no one is trusted more for financial institutions than credit unions. Year after year, year after year, for decades and decades, there have been surveys done of consumers. Who do you trust more? And lo and behold, the answer is credit unions. So that's not, not, not me saying that only. I'm basing that on a history of, you know, just a ton of people being asked that question. So walking into a trusted financial institution, I think, has great meaning. Um, no matter what time it is or what year it is, uh, that trust factor, I think, is a huge benefit. Again, it goes back to being a member owner. Right. And what really um, I love about the mission of credit unions is like the community that it's within that it serves. So like if you're banking with a credit union and, you, you know, that money is most likely being deployed to other people within your community, small business owners. And some credit unions are made up of like maybe have a higher percentage of business owners than others. But there was um, one credit union. It slips my mind now, but it was in Brooklyn. And I love that one of their things was they actually didn't require like a Social Security number to join. So because the community was very, um, had a lot of, you know, immigrants and undocumented people, but so underbanked people that need these services and this credit union was able to provide membership to these people. And I thought that like that to me is just an amazing testimony to the different types of credit unions and how they serve, really serve the community. Yeah. And let me just uh, pick up on that a little bit and, and, and speak. So uh, very inspiring. Uh, so a couple of stories for you just to share. So I've been in the credit union system for almost 30 years. So uh, one, a couple of stories that jump out to me are a credit union CEO saying, uh, you know, we have taxi drivers that are part of our membership. Many of them are immigrants and they don't speak uh, English well. And that the taxi drivers would come to the credit union, bring their bills with them. And, and the CEO would sit down with that member, with that taxi driver, open their bills and help that member pay their bills. <laughs> That, that's called you know, a going above and beyond. Our members bend over backwards, our credit unions bend over backwards to make a difference in their members' lives. That includes financial education, financial literacy. I've been in credit unions um, that are in inner cities and rural areas, all points in between, that sit down one-on-one -on -one and teach them financial education, teach them financial literacy. Many credit unions do that through technology as well but it's the personal human touch that I think resonates with people and is part of what I call the credit union difference. But you know, what you, your example, Jamila, for uh, New York City, that takes place at thousands of credit unions across the country. Yeah, and also important to note, like, and this is where it comes in of it being like a balanced approach where, yes, you're helping the community, you're giving back in certain ways. But again, when you're banking with a credit union, it is for the betterment also of your personal finances, of the financial tools you have. Because I don't want people to think, well, this is just like a goodwill gesture. Like it is. But the powerful thing about this is in addition to that, 
you're actually like on par with, um, and like you said, more time saving and earning more because of this. You're going to have access to the full range of traditional banking services. And some will be uh, very particular when it comes to financial literacy, financial education, and various types of services. But uh, it's the, uh, the mission behind it. It's the caring for families, for people, for businesses that really, really stand out and resonate with people. And, you know, let's get also specific about the products because, you know, we're talking general and maybe some people are like, well, maybe it's just like a checking account or savings account, but it's a wide like array of products that credit unions offer. So let's just go through like it's literally everything. It's secured credit cards. It's business loans. What else? Yeah. So it's going to be the full range of lending, lending products, uh, certainly on the uh, mortgage lending side or the, uh, you know, home lending side. It's going to be the 15, 30 year, all, all points in between. At the end of the day, the credit union will want to get you uh, into that home, into that place where you can call your home. They will bend over backwards to make those terms work for you and your family. It's going to be, uh, you know, credit cards. It's going to be auto loans, you know, you and new and used. It's going to be a full range. And, and on, the, on the share side, the deposit side, it'll be, you know, IRAs, uh, CDs, money markets, uh, checking, savings, they will want you to save uh, responsibly. So, and, and that's just on the, you might say the share and loan side, you're gonna have remote deposit capture, uh, bill pay, you know, peer to peer banking. Uh, it's gonna be a full range, again, uh, any device, any time uh, at your convenience. And uh, you know, in some cases, credit unions will have maybe a home energy type loan, uh, which I thought was very uh, unique. Uh, some credit unions, um, have sometimes offered loans for help an immigrant uh, become a U.S. citizen, which I think is very, very unique and special. I, I've seen credit unions do loans to help people have an adoption, you know, pay those kind of expenses. So those are very personal stories that resonate. And uh, it's not going to just stop at the, you know, the home mortgage, the, uh, the checking account. It's those really, I'll call it one-off, personalized services that have extra meaning and value, I think, to people. Right. And, you know, one of the things I was most excited about when being able to partner with DCU was un when I got to understand, like, the, like the credit union, like the way that you guys, uh, different credit unions, like it's like not a competition at all. It's like all for one, like you said, because, you know, I was like, well, you know, I don't I don't I think joining MCU for me is better because it's like around the corner. And they were like, yes, go ahead. And I think, on you know, we had a conversation and you were like, it may be true, but like that, there's something called where I can actually access, like you, there's a, a way in which you can access your money if the credit unions are associated with each other through their tellers and banks. So I also want to talk about that network system because it's literally not a competition between the credit unions. Everyone is trying to like lift each other up within this system. Yeah, yeah, Jamila, it's, it's, uh, it's incredibly unique, uh, you know, comparing us to others in the financial uh, space. So a few thoughts quickly uh, to back up. You mentioned DCU a few times. They are a member of our association. Uh, they are one of the most respected credit unions, not only in New England, but the country. Uh, I know their team well. They have a huge heart. They contribute to thousands of community organizations uh, every single year. And I would say that, you know, DCU lives the credit union mission every single day. But within our membership, we have credit unions way below that uh, their size that have the same big heart and mission of serving members. So uh, it's just incredibly uh, heartwarming to see our membership of different asset sizes uh, fulfill that credit union difference and mission and philosophy. So collaboration is certainly very unique. It kind of blows people away that, well, you guys get along and you guys help each other. You know, it's very unusual for people on the outside to see that. So what does that look like uh, for your, your audience? That means they collaborate on a surcharge-free network, uh, literally 30,000, uh, you know, a network of 30,000 through the co-op financial services uh, is great for members. There's something called shared branching. Close to 2,000 credit unions in the country literally share their branches. So uh, a member at one credit union can do banking at another credit union. That opens up uh, roughly 5,000 branches coast to coast. That doesn't happen <laughs> anywhere else. It's the collaborative uh, approach that credit unions have to help one another. It's good business, but it's also the right thing to do to bring the credit union difference to more and more people. And uh, it's very unique, very special, and I think makes us stand out in one more way. 
Yeah, sure it does. And so if someone wanted to understand or know, like, like if they're credit union that they're considering or the current one that they maybe don't even know there's a benefit to this, they would just need to call and ask, or is there a site, one of the, like the sites to go to to get that information? Yeah. Uh, first things first, I would start with uh, where you currently do your, uh, where's your membership at? Where do your banking at for the credit union? So uh, they would be the first ones to uh, validate, you know, yes, we are part of share branching or not. Roughly half of the 120 or so million people in the country have access to shared branching. So uh, there's a good chance that your credit union is part of that. Right. And the other cool thing is the, the access to your money. So I think that's also like a myth of that it's hard to get to, like, especially if you move away, you know, life changes and career changes and just the unknown is if you join a credit union, like the thought process is maybe with a traditional bank, you can rely that they're most the big ones, you know, will be everywhere. But that if you move away from a credit union, then like what happens? Um, can you talk through the access to your money and then moving away from wherever you opened your account? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so great access uh, to your money as far as uh, if, if you move, say, if I move from Boston down to Florida, I'd have access to shared branching, uh, who I actually, you know, I'm a member of, uh, of DCU. But, you know, uh, they have great technology. We touched on that earlier. So online digital banking, uh, the app. Uh, surcharge free network. So uh, your your membership, that that membership travels with you and you would not miss a beat. Uh, I know a ton of people that have moved from uh, place to place out of state that have not missed a beat when it comes to having full access to your money. And it's just, uh, again, part of what we do. What is then the charge for more people to join and like credit unions? Is it more of a knowledge, like just getting the benefits and, and promoting credit unions more to the public? Is there what is on your mind for your organization a way to increase membership so people, more people join and know about it? Yeah, it comes down to, in many cases, awareness, uh, people just not knowing uh, that, they, that, you know, what credit unions are. Uh, and there is that kind of perception that, oh, a, a credit union might be challenging to join. I'm, I'm not sure if I can quite join that credit union. So uh, as an association, we need to help fight down those barriers that people might have a perception and we're working on that. We have our own four state awareness campaign called Better Values, Better Banking. There's a national campaign taking place right now uh, called Open Your Eyes. And that's really open your eyes to the benefits of a credit union. So there's uh, initiatives taking place at the local, state and national level. Um, at the end of the day, if people just kind of dip their toe in the water and say, you know what, I'm going to take a shot at this and belong to a credit union, uh, it's going to pay huge dividends, no pun intended. Uh, over time that uh, they will find the service is more personal, it's more meaningful, it's more trusted. Uh, you know, and today's day and age, I think um, the social mission of giving back and keeping money local, of helping your neighbors get to a better place financially, I think that resonates with people. Um, people want to help people. You want to help your neighbor. You want to help your town and your city and your community uh, get to a better place. So, uh, people over profit is not just a term. Uh, people helping people is not only a term that's lived every day for our members. And if consumers were to, again, dip your toe in the water and take a shot at it, um, I think they would fall in love with a credit union on day one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have. I feel like it's definitely been a great experience for me since joining. And credit unions have been around for a long time. So it's not like they're going to go somewhere. So I'd like to kind of get into the history of credit unions, how they came to be. If you can just give us like a little walk back in history? Yeah, I don't want to go too far back, but I'll go back a, a, quite a ways. And uh, the real roots came from Europe. It was uh, cooperatives that were in uh, in Europe that taking place. It might have been a, a farm cooperative or, um, you know, some kind of financial cooperative. But that that migrated across the ocean and really took footprint in Canada. And there's some early pioneers, uh, Alphonse Desjardins, Edward Filene, who are big people in our, in our world. Um, but they were really pioneers in North American uh, cooperative movement. And uh, in Massachusetts, we are home to the first uh, state credit union law in 1909 that helped establish the credit union system in Massachusetts. And it, it started out small, but over time, it just spread like, you know, it's a seed, you know, uh, it just grew and grew. And 1934, President Roosevelt signed the Federal Credit Union Act into law. That opened up things even more, but uh, it kind of germinated in uh, in Europe, came across the ocean, Canada, down to the U.S., and it really started out for people that didn't have access to 
uh, mainstream financial services. It might have been uh, immigrants of some kind or people that felt left out in society. And it took maybe a, a local leader of some kind to band together some peers. And in those days, Jamila, it was modest beginnings. It may have been a $25 you know, start to that credit union in 1909 or 1910 or something like that. Um, but the, uh, the concept of uh, pulling money together to help your neighbors, help people of a common bond uh, get to a better place uh, just took off. And you know, fast forward years and years, I've uh, gotten through depressions, world wars, pandemics even, but credit unions are thriving. Uh, they are growing uh, 120 million. I think those credit union founders in 1909 would be amazed at the credit union system today and incredibly proud that uh, today's leaders like DCU or others have lived up to that mission of people helping people. Yeah. And again, it goes so in line with, so on, you know, my podcast with my content, when I talk to journeyers, it's about, you know, reaching financial independence and freedom and creating more options in your life. And a lot of that is just doing it in a way that also is in alignment with your values. And so I think now more than ever, um, people are realizing that how they vote with their money is important, um, how they, you know, bank is important, who they support and give their money to is important. So I really hope that um, this crash course in credit unions was great for people to really like, I want you to take action, guys. I want you to really look up if you're not a member of your local credit union to look up. We'll do the sites again where you can check out um, who you have access to. I think you had said better value, betterbanking.com and yourmoneyfurther.com, right? Yep, better value, betterbanking.com and your money further.com. And Jamil, if I could just give another plug for our, our, credit, our credit union. So uh, yeah. I, I, I can tell you that they give, give money and they give millions of dollars every year to charities, which they do. So, but it's not just writing a check for credit unions, it's that uh, personal touch. So in Massachusetts, we have something called the Mass Coalition for the Homeless and Build a Bed for Every Child. It's the state charity that credit unions rally around. And what happens is several times a year, credit unions will come together and build a bed for a homeless child. And that's, you know, hundreds of people doing that every single year. And it's not just build a bed for a child. Our credit unions will, they'll give them a book. They'll give them a blanket. They'll give them a stuffed animal. So it's just incredibly personal, incredibly meaningful. And that's just one example of thousands about how, how credit unions care, whether it's DCU or the credit unions across New Hampshire, Delaware, Rhode Island, I could I could rattle off many more, but I'll leave some of them out. I don't want to, you know, uh, you know, leave any of our members out. But I'm incredibly proud of how credit unions make a difference. Throughout the pandemic, our credit unions stepped up naturally in their DNA to waive billions of dollars in payments for mortgage, consumer, uh, business loans. They waived millions of dollars of fees, set up emergency loans. It's just an incredible story that I think needs to be told. We're trying to tell the story and having your journeyers hear this, I think it's just one more venue. So to your listeners, uh, if they're on a journey, you have a financial partner for life in your local trusted credit union. And uh, again, I, I would say take a hard look. And at the end of the day, I think you'll be thrilled. Amazing. So again, we'll link all of that in the episode show notes. This was a great, even for me, I learned some um, new things on this in this conversation. So I'm really hoping that you listening will also really take action and check out your local credit union. Thanks once again. Mila, thank you and have a great day to your listeners and uh, I will see you on the journey. (laughs) All right, I really hope you enjoyed and got a lot of information from this episode with Ron. My intention here is not only that you are educated in this, like that's amazing, but that you take action. So check out your local credit union and become a member. And don't forget, Ron and I are going live on Instagram on November 20th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So come join us. I'm at Journey to Launch and DCU is DCU Credit Union. Make sure you're following us and join us live to ask your questions and to see us and interact with us. Okay, here's the DCU tip of the week. Do a fall cleaning. Now is a great time to see what you have around the house that you no longer need. Consider selling furniture or co-signing clothing that's in good shape for extra cash and make sure you put that extra money to your savings goals.
If you want to check out the episode show notes, that's where you can get links to anything that's mentioned and even get a transcribed version of this episode that you can read. Go to journeytolaunch.com or click the description of wherever you're listening to this episode. Now, you can also still grab your free Journeyer Jumpstart Guide by texting LAUNCH to 33777 or go to journeytolaunch.com slash jumpstart. If you want to support me and the podcast and love the free content and information that you get here, here are four ways that you can support me and the show. One, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast wherever you listen, whether that's Apple Podcasts, that purple app on your phone, your Android device, YouTube, Spotify, wherever it is that you happen to listen, just subscribe so you are not missing an episode. And if you're happening to listen to this in Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe there. I appreciate and read every single review. Number two, follow me on my social media accounts. I'm at Journey to Launch on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I love, love, love interacting with journeyers there. Three, support and check out the sponsors of this show if you hear something that interests you. Sponsors are the main ways we keep the podcast lights on here. So show them some love for supporting your girl. Four, and last but not least, share this episode, this podcast with a friend or family member or coworker so that we can spread the message of Journey to Launch. All right, that's it. Until next week, keep on journeying, journeyers. Journeyers.